someone in the comments brought up the fact that if the hunters want to protect humans, they should really be going after the Wendigos and not the werewolves in the Teen Wolf universe. See, contrary to traditional culinary practices, it actually tastes better for someone like me. And the kill's been frightened. This is very true. Wendigos are far more of a threat than our furry fanged up friends. As we saw, within hours of what we can presume was Sean Walcott's last meal of human flesh, the boy was overwhelmed with hunger to the point that he killed and started eating the next walking livestock he saw. I couldn't help it. I'm so hungry. This despite the fact that the single meal would expose his true nature and make him an immediate target. I'm just so hungry! Now, for those familiar with such things, Sean's is some troubling addiction behavior, and it suggests that Teen Wolf Wendigo lead incredibly difficult lives. Scott said he called himself a, uh, a Wendigo. Cannibalistic shapeshifters, but I haven't heard of them in Beacon Hills for a long time. Must have been well hidden. So Derek says they've been hidden, but how is that possible? Sean showed that he cannot eat regular food, or he was, at the very least, repulsed by regular food. So we're led to believe that he had to kill and eat at least one human within each 24-hour period. But then again, Sean's a teenager, and you know what regular human teens' appetites can be like during those awkward years. So let's say Sean is hungrier than most Wendigo, which is why he got so reckless. I'm just so hungry! But even taking that into account, Sean is part of a family of four. We know very little about the family structure beyond the fact that it was two boys, a mom and a dad, but still, even if they share, that's at least one dead human per day in order to keep the munchies away. And if they all get like Sean after going too long between meals, it would be literally impossible to stay hidden. This is why I'm guessing that a smart Wendigo family like the Walcotts must have developed some Dexter-level killer organizational skills. They were able to maintain their food supply and live a relatively normal suburban life. They owned or rented this really nice house, and presumably they had jobs in order to pay for it. So the fact that the Walcott home was full of frozen dinners makes a lot of sense. And come to think of it, they may not have jobs. They could be supporting themselves by stealing their food's money. That would actually make sense. No matter where they get the funding, the Walcotts had figured out how to manage Wendigo addiction and live under the radar in a town full of supernaturals and people who hunt supernaturals. That is no easy task. I mean, we've seen at least one other of these Wendigo that got caught with this teeth showing. Open your eyes! The Deadpool's over. You're not going to get paid. I'm not here to kill you, Patrick. I'm taking you back to Eichenhaus, where they know all about your culinary practices. The fact that Patrick was so sloppy and left the trail for Deaton to follow, as well as the fact that he had already been locked up in Eichen prior to this, suggests to me that there can't be very many Wendigos in this universe. Or, if there are a whole bunch, 
they must be extremely well-funded and disciplined in order to maintain secrecy.